Welcome to the full build video where we're going to build up this drone. Let's get straight to it. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're doing a build is make sure you have all the components ready to go. So for this build, we're going to be using the Open Racer Pro frame. And I have this printed in PCTPE, which is a nylon blend. Very tough. And here is the frame itself. Uh, with the stack screws ready for mounting. I'm going to be using the Heads Up 533 motors. That's right, this is going to be a Freedom Spec build. Then I'm going to be using the Reaper Mini 20x20 electronic speed controller, the Foxeer Mini V2F722 flight controller. I'm going to be using the Predator V5 Nano camera by Foxeer. And then I'm going to be using this Immersion RC Tramp Hybrid Duo Board. This is the video transmitter and the receiver all in one. So it's going to be a very quick and easy build. The next thing you're going to want to do is what I call the layout. This is kind of like step zero. So you're going to want to actually lay everything out the way that it would on the stack to so make sure you actually have enough space and size in here before you start soldering things so i'm going to put some standoffs below now before you can actually do that layout you need to apply your gummies to each component if they're not already pre-gummied so you just take the little gummy like that and stick it in here this one actually goes in pretty easily uh, but if you have to use a screwdriver to get it to go all the way in, you can just do it kind of like that. Just be careful not to actually pierce the gummy itself. So now we've applied gummies to all three of these. And for my layout, what I actually did was I applied a little nut to the bottom to get this a little bit distance away from the carbon and metal. So I'm first going to go ahead and place the ESC on here. Put it all the way down and you're going to want to inspect and make sure you have enough clearance if there's anything metal or a part of the frame below you're going to want to go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure and compress that gummy to make sure there's no way in a crash you're going to make contact with that screw uh, if it's very now i have at least two and a half mils clearance here if it was less clearance i'd actually put a little bit of electrical tape over that but this should be fine next we have our flight controller I'm going to go ahead and orient it with the harness connector to the front, which is how it's actually going to sit. Uh, make sure we have enough clearance there. Next, we're going to take our combo Ghost Hybrid Duo. Uh, we're going to lay this also with the connector to the front and put it right there. Now, the Ghost has a flat side on the bottom, so you can actually lay this very, very close kind of laying on the harness right there. Now, you want to make sure there's clearance for this USB. And so whatever kind of layout you're doing, you want to make sure you have clearance, no metal touching metal. So this USB is very, very close to this board. So what we're going to do is check to see if there's any metal connections on there. There are a few pads right there. So I just covered this with a little Super 33 electrical tape, just in case it's ever compressed and it does make it uh, a connection, it won't actually pass any power or anything to that USB port. Now this looks good. The other thing I want to check is that I have enough screw on the top to be able to attach my nuts and seal the stack. Then you're going to want to take your top plate or in my case, the pod and just do a quick test fit to make sure that everything is going to be clear. So I'm going to push this on and now we're going to take a look and yes, I have plenty of clearance in the front and the back. So this should all work. Now, actually, when I screw this on, this is going to sit about two and a half millimeters lower, but I can see I have that amount of clearance. So I'm good to go and start wiring everything up. Now, the first thing that we're actually going to solder up is going to be the electronic speed controller and the motors. So we're going to remove the flight controller, VTX, and receiver. And the first thing we're going to do is tin up all these wires. Now, I'm going to be using 
Caster's 6337 Rosin Core Solder. I'll have a link for this in below. Um, if you're having bad soldering, you may have cheap solder. Now this costs 18 or $20 for this roll. It lasts a long time. It may seem a little bit expensive, but it's totally worth it because this actually melts well. A lot of times it's not your soldering skills that are terrible, it's your solder. The other thing I'm gonna use is this Kester Flux Pen. Pens, you can use a uh, flux in a jar, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of this. That's gonna make the solder flow a little bit better. I'm gonna put my temperature up to about 420 degrees. Now look at the order I do it. This is not 100% necessary, but you don't want to apply too much heat to one section of the board at once. So first, I'm going to do one of these power pads. So I kind of let it start heating up a little bit and I just feed solder in there till I have a nice ball. Now instead of going straight over here, I'm actually going to go up into this corner so I can let that cool before I go to the next pad. Now see, I'm making these nice round balls. You just apply a little bit of heat to the pad, then feed the solder in there, and then just pull it both of those away. You wanna have enough solder, enough of a nice ball to be able to easily solder your rest. If you're too stingy with the solder, if you don't put enough, it's gonna make the rest of your job a little bit more difficult. So do that. Next thing you can do, is take all your motors, kind of measure them to length, uh, get the ends stripped, and then you're gonna wanna 10 each motor wire. So, I've actually already done this to these, but I'll just show you one more time. Just put a little bit of solder on the tip. That's what's gonna allow that to join a little nicer. And we're also gonna go ahead and do our power leads and our capacitor. Now for power leads, this is a little bit more wire than I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna really kind of want it to be kind of like this, right like there. Now some people use wire strippers, but you got two built-in wire strippers right here. You just kind of grab it. Now, as I'm stripping these, the red one looks good, but the black one is too long. Now here's a rule of thumb. Your wire that you have should be about the same length as the pad. You can see how this is longer than the pad. You don't want that because then you're gonna have bare wire in the middle here. So let's trim this. Now we've tinned our ESC and our motor pads and our motor wires themselves. But we're also going to want to do the same thing and be very generous with the solder for these power leads. These are going to be the thickest wires and we want the best joint possible right here. It's going to get that soldering iron nice and hot. Then we're going to just really let it soak in. The other thing that's important to do is to clean your soldering iron tip every once in a while. If you have one of those little metal shaving things that clean it or a little sponge like this, make sure you got a little bit of wetness in there and just clean it every so often. I'm gonna do the farthest one first, which is going to be negative. I'm gonna zip tie it to this right rear arm. I'm gonna just kind of lay it on top and I'm gonna start heating that until it kind of falls a little bit. You want it to fall into that lower blob of solder and just become one big ball of solder. I'm gonna check it. You can see it could be a little bit lower. So we're gonna apply a little bit more heat till we get it lower. I'm gonna do the other side first. Don't forget as you go to keep applying some of this flux. That's gonna help the solder melt faster. You don't wanna stay on a pad too long. If you start soldering and have an issue where it's not melting the right way, just back off, let it cool a few seconds and try it again. All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna zip tie it right there. It's gonna face like that and I'll be ready to plug it in. Next thing I'm gonna do is screw on the motors and we're gonna solder those up next. 
Now before you actually solder it on, you're gonna to wanna to apply some tape to get these motor wires in place. You can use this Tessa, this is actually automotive electrical harness tape. It's sort of a claw tape, very nice. Or you can use this uh, 3M Super 33 premium electrical tape. This won't get hot or sticky. Either one of these is good for this. All you do is kind of pull the wire straight, put your tape on there, sort of work it towards the center right there, and then get yourself a nice clean wrap. That'll hold it in place and it just looks nice and clean. Make sure that the wires are nice and taut you don't want them loose right there so we're going to do the same thing to all four of these now before i start soldering the motors i'm going to solder up and install a capacitor this is a uruav combo that has a little cap uh with some wire leads already done a lot of people just install these straight to the power leads but i find for my racers if the open racer has kind of a little slot right there with a couple of holes in here that you can zip tie this too, so I'm gonna mount it kind of like right there. So I can put those zip ties through there. And we're just gonna tin these little capacitor wires like that. Be careful if you are over your electronics board. Um, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to drip, but it's just a good measure just to kind of not do it over in case you do have a solder drip for those that are not used to doing this. Now, if you don't have a little self locking set of tweezers, you're gonna to wanna to get some of those and just make sure you got plenty of solder right there so that you can hold this in place and just melt it together. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. And we're gonna do the same thing with the positive. Now we have our capacitor installed. It's time to go ahead and solder up these motor wires. So for the ones in the back, I like to kind of take it behind the standoff. For the ones in the front, I just like to go straight there. So you can kind of think about how you want those to go beforehand. Apply a little bit of flux, and we're gonna take our little tweezers and just kind of lay it right on top. You can see, again, you don't want the bare wire to be longer than the pad. You want it to be about the same size. You just kind of want to hold it on there so it's going to sink right in place as you apply the heat. And once it sinks, you just let go and a perfect shiny solder joint. Now we're going to do the next one. And same thing again. You're going to want to angle it till it's right on top. Just apply the heat and a tiny bit of pressure so that it can sink into place and there we go now, these don't necessarily have to be perfect you don't have to eat off of them but you don't want a lot of bare wire sticking out you want to have it as close to the pad as you can we're going to go ahead and do the rest You can also see like the speed that these joints are happening. If you're doing it too slow, it's not gonna work out well. You just kinda wanna get in and out. Once it sinks to the bottom of the pad, you're ready to let go of the heat and keep the wire there until it cools. Now we have all 12 of the motor wire soldered up along with 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 solder joints so far, including the capacitor and all of the motors. Now it's time for the flight controller. So what you're gonna wanna do is pay attention to the labels on these pads or go ahead and look up your flight controller diagram. Now what we're gonna be installing is our camera cable. Normally you might use a long cable like this, but I'm actually using the Predator 5 Nano camera right here that has its own Cam camera cable so we're going to use a modified shorty cable that i've created right here and so that's going to be three wires right there then we're going to use the harness to the ghost video transmitter and receiver right here now we only need four of these five wires and those are all going to go at the front so we have camera ground five volt vtx ground 
5 volt and TX5. So now that we've identified all of the pads that we're going to tin up, we're going to go ahead and apply some flux to make those flow a little bit easier. We're going to get our iron. Now for the motor pads and the power leads, I was using the highest this would go. For this iron, the TS100 is 420 degrees, but for these smaller pads, I'm actually going to come down to 390. I don't need as high of heat and we're just going to put a little dab of solder on all of the pads that we're going to use starting with this second one the first one is camera control but we don't need that for this project and notice how quickly i'm getting in and out here very quick and then i only need the t pad for the ghost okay so we're going to take our tiny little camera cable that we have made and it's going to kind of point towards the front. So the first one's going to be the yellow wire, the camera wire. Let's see if we can get it to go down in that hole. Now what I sometimes like to use are some little magnifying glasses like this for the very small pads. The next one is going to be ground. And the next one is going to be 5 volts. Yeah, so there's your camera harness. Now, I don't need the blue wire on this ghost harness, but this is something that if you ever have to repin a connector, you get a tiny little sharp object like tweezers or the end of this, move that little knob up, then the wire comes out, and you just push that back into place, being careful not to disturb the others because you want those other ones to stay locked in place. Now we're going to kind of measure how much of this wire we need and it's going to kind of go off to the side and in like this so probably about this much is good so we're going to cut and then strip these four wires and tin them up and I actually want this harness to go outwards like that, so we're gonna do it in this direction this time. Now all of the soldering is complete, so we're gonna twist any of these wire sets make sure that our length is good and it's going to kind of go like that which looks great now we're going to kind of do is place everything where it actually needs to go so i want this ghost antenna to go in here like this i'm going to take this harness put it in place and this is what connects the flight controller to the electronic speed controller now we're going to put the ghost board on top and again we're going to make sure that everything looks seated the way that we want it to be. Now we're going to start routing these antenna wires for the receiver. So this one's actually going to go up front but before we do that we want to plug our harness in right there. These ghost have these little UFL locking uh, things right here. So you're gonna pull it out so that you can push it on. Once you have it on the UFL, you're just gonna push that little locking connector back, which locks it on there. I just want to be down right here. So I'm gonna take this antenna wire, take it around the front and then pull it around to the back. Now we have antenna and camera mounting. This part is going to be slightly different for every build, but for me, uh, my antenna mounting is running an SMA, a UFL to SMA to the back of this pod. And then my antenna is just going to screw on right here. So we're going to do that. And the camera connector goes right here. Now this build, 
has a camera locker that I have right here. This will lock my camera angle at 45 degrees, which is what I like to fly at. So all I have to do, now this camera locker is specifically made for the Foxer Predator V5 with the 1.7 lens. Um, so if you had a frame and it had these, you gotta make sure you're running the camera that it's built for because this is specifically sized for the lens. It adds a little bit of protection and it locks the camera in place. So all you gotta do, and for this, there's a pokey part right here that marks up and we just kind of push this in. Just like that. And I push that one. Everything fits. We're ready to go ahead and put our nuts on to close off the stack. As we're putting these on, we want to make sure they're not hitting any of these little connectors. Also, if you have a 5.5 box wrench, once you have these on, you want to do one last look to make sure you're not compressing the gummies too, too much, uh, but that they are tight on there. So you don't want the nuts to fall off either. So everything looks perfect. If you see one gummy that's all the way squished or that the flight controller is not level, that's how you know you need to adjust those slightly. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the pot on. And then here's the turtle mode fin, which just fits in this little slot right here. And there are some little pins that go in that hold it into place. Now we're almost ready to go fly, but before we do, we're gonna take a nice thick zip tie and anchor our power leads into place. That's in case if you have a big crash where your battery gets ejected, you don't want it ripping on your ESC pad so hard that you could risk breaking them. So you always want to anchor your battery lead. That goes for a racing style or freestyle quad. Get it nice and tight. And now we're gonna trim all three of these zip ties. The two for the capacitor and the one for the battery lead. So you're always gonna wanna have your side cutters as well. So now your build is complete and you're almost ready to go fly, but you still have to set a beta flight first. So check out the video in the corner right here, click it. We're gonna have a full beta flight walkthrough, a speed run, everything done in under 10 minutes. So stay tuned for that. Or you the kind of person that just likes to fly defaults, go out, send it, realize one of your motors is spinning the wrong way, crash terribly. Hopefully you armed it far away from your face. You did, didn't you? You're always safe. You never turn it on in side you should never turn it on if it looks like this with the props on for the first time don't do it don't do it guys i know it's tempting don't even think about it